So good evening. I'm so excited to be with you tonight. So we are actually start. We are on day three of base camp two um, of the Give Me This Mountain Book of Pastor Prince. So um, so we have a we we welcome um, a, a good friend of ours from Cavite from Iloilo si Maret. Um, we are so glad to ano. We are so glad to um, to have you tonight. So. Ten times better than the world. So this this is in reference to the life of Daniel. So Daniel, um, who is one of the uh, prophets um, um, in the Old Testament. So di ba exciting, no? So um, para ma-appreciate nyo, gusto kong, um, I would like to show you this um, timeline. It is a very good reference so that we have a context. Did you, uh, little did I know that si Daniel pala, he lived during the time of uh, the prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Okay? So si Daniel was one of the nobles um, ano siya, eh, from the tribe of Judah who was uh, um, together uh, carried away into exile sa Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. So tingnan natin na. Ah, so, mag-umpisa tayo dito. So, 6 to 8 BC, ito na yung death ni King Josiah. King Josiah is one of the good kings of um, the tribe of Judah. And then after that, ang nag-succeed ang nag, uh, yung, uh, uh, nag-succeed sa kanya is si Jehoia, Jehoia, Jehoia. One, yung eventually nag-succeed si Jehoia King who is a bad king. He's an evil king. So, makikita nyo mamaya, he was, um, he was also exiled into Babylon. So, ayan na, Nebuchadnezzar attacks Jerusalem and then everybody was carried, uh, hindi everybody, um, most of them were carried into Babylon for 70 years captivity. Ganyan. You know that si, ano, si Nebuchadnezzar, anak niya si King Ahasuerus. Si King Ahasuerus, yun yung king dun sa, ano, kwento ni, ni Queen Esther naman. Oh, itong Persia, itong Babylon is Persia. It is a, the ancient Iran. Yan. So, Okay, start tayo, no? So, yung Babylonian exile. You know, these are the... You, you know, you will really appreciate... Um, um, I really... Uh, my, my heart was warm when we were having a Bible study last Wednesday. Because although, although the story of Daniel happened a long time ago, um, um, it's still uh, the, the word of the Lord that was spoken long time ago through the prophets Jeremiah and through the prophets Ezekiel and we will discuss in word name prophets, prophet Jeremiah it's for us right? everything in the Bible when we read it in the context in the lens of the cross is for us so these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders of the exiles and to the priests and the prophets and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So, di ba, ginera sila, tapos ginawa silang exile. So, kinuha sila lahat dun sa Babylon. Okay? So, kasama dyan si Daniel at yung kanyang three friends, si Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Yung Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego are not uh, Hebrew names. These are uh, um, Babylonian names which you will see. Yan. So, so Jer Jeremiah 29, 147. So during the time of the, uh, captivity, si Jeremiah wrote a letter to Daniel, to Daniel and all the and all the people who are exiled. And this will really warm your heart. Okay? So di ba pag exile, di ba? Um, you have no rights, you are prisoner, di ba? Uh, so equivalent to a very, very challenging time. So malaking problema. Right? So they're, they're taken out of their home country. Pero alam niyo ba ang sinabi ni, sinabi ni Lord through the prophet Jeremiah? Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Parang sabi ko nung Wednesday, sabi ko parang, parang yung mga OFW lang, ano? Or parang yung mga, for example, si Maji and our friends to, uh, in the US na who are separated from their Families here from the Philippines. Parang ganyan. So, anong sabi ni Lord? When you are experiencing challenges, or specifically exile, build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. So, when you are in a difficult situation, you know, it's very wise to plant gardens. It's in Scripture. It's in Jeremiah 29 verse 5. 
and also build houses. Ah, sana nandito yung friend natin si ano, no? Na si Sandra. Sabi ko, nung makita ko nga to, oh, okay, it makes sense. Okay. So, take wives um, and have sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there and do not decrease. Ah, and then, ito yung pinaka-importante. Number seven, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. So ano yung sinasabi, na, sinasabi ni Lord dito? For example, you were exiled or nag-abroad ka. Kasi ang daming Pilipinong nasa abroad, right? At one point in time in my life, I was um, an OFW in Singapore. So, uh, hindi hindi lang hindi lang yun yung context ano ang sinasabi dito is when you when you are um, in a very challenging situation anong sabi ni Lord pray to the Lord on its behalf for, for example you 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 were sent to the US you were sent to um, Singapore you were sent to Saudi Arabia sabi ni Lord pray for that nation where you are planted you are planted in this church pray for that church for in its welfare you will find your welfare. So sa madaling salita, huwag tayong pasaway. Right? Hindi tayo makibaka. Hindi tayo nagre-rebelde. Ganyan. Especially when we are living in another country or in or in in a church setting or in an office. Diba? So um, you are planted in that office. Ang sabi ni Lord, pray to the Lord for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Hallelujah! Kanda, no? I never, I never heard about this verse until last Wednesday. So, ang sabi ni Jeremiah sa mga exiled, sa mga hinuli, Jeremiah sent this letter from Jerusalem to the exiles in Babylon who had been exiled from their homeland. They are not engaged, that they are not to engage in clandestine guerrilla warfare against the land of exile. Neither does he command them to confine themselves to a Jewish ghetto. He says that they are to engage in regular activities that lead to prosperity of their new land. So, maliwanag ano, they're not to um, maging clannish. Ah, ah, Ilocano, Ilocano, Kapangpangan, Kapangpangan. Or kunwari, you are a Filipino in other in other nation na ang mga friends mo lang, Pilipino, ganyan. No, but ang sabi, eh, ang sabi ni Lord, eh, do not confine yourselves to, to, you know, to a very clannish ganyan. But, you are to live peaceably in the land where you are sent. For example, in the office, right? You are to live peaceably with, with everybody. Hallelujah! So for example, meron kang uh, mga ka-office mate na of different belief na hindi pa nila kilala si Lord. Na for example, hindi sila kumakain ng pork or hindi sila kumakain ng um, hindi sila umiinom ng alak or ganyan. Or for example na lang, there are also believers na who are very um, conservative na hindi kumakain ng ganito, hindi umiinom ng ganito. You know what? Ang sabi ni Lord, di ba, uh, um, you can eat everything, correct? <laughs> but just pray for it. Pero ang sabi ni Lord, in 1 Corinthians 8.13, Therefore, if what I eat causes my brother or sister to fall into sin, I will never eat meat again. So for the sake of your brother, for the sake of your sister, right, you will have the patience and you will have the uh, the 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 kind heart right to to not to eat pork in front of him so that you'll be a very good testimony so ganun lang pala yon but in your house pwede kang kumain in your house pwede kang uh, you, if you're a wine drinker the bible doesn't say the bible doesn't forbid drinking wine remember the holy communion it's the bread and the wine it's the bread and the wine right so hindi siya bawal and even the lord jesus actually um, uh, the miracle, his first miracle was to turn water into wine. If it's, diba, and everything, remember in Genesis, everything that God made is good. And Jesus is the exact representation of the Father. So if Jesus did uh, um, turn the water in, into wine, and it is good, so it's not forbidden. Ang, 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 ang hindi lang maganda is when you are um, to the point of being drunk, right? Yun ang hindi magandang testimony. Okay? And it's not very good for your health. Okay? So, ano ba yung pinaka-landmark sinabi na sinabi ni Lord? 
doon sa mga exile, you know yung Jeremiah 29 verse 11, sinabi pala niya ito kila Daniel. A people whom were cap- who were captives in a foreign land. So, tantamang to saying, um, equivalent to saying na um, a, a people who have very big challenges, a people who have problems, ang sabi, anong sinasabi ni Lord to you and I? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for peace and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. You know yung hope dyan is tikba. And naaral natin to time and again. Yung tikba is accord. It means being united to the Lord. You are one with Him. So, um, 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 uh, yung Bible hope, the Bible hope is not, um, I hope so, right? But Bible hope is a confident expectation of good that something will something will happen to you. And yung root word actually ng tikba is kava. Kava, why, why, uh, uh, the reason why you can hope for good, for something good that will happen to you is because you are one with the Lord. Yung kaba, it means in the Hebrew, kaba is Hebrew and it means you are one with God. God is with you. Hallelujah. So, you know, whatever challenge that you have um, physically, uh, um, financially, or relationally, ang sinasabi, ni, ang sinasabi ni Lord, you can confidently hope in me. Because I am good. I love you very much. My plans I have for you, declares the Lord, are plans for peace, shalom. Diba? Shalom is completeness, wholeness, nothing missing and nothing broken. Hallelujah! So tingnan natin yung, ano, ah, tingnan natin yung story ni Daniel. Inuna ko lang yun para... Uh, kasi maganda siyang ano eh. Kasi yung context ng Daniel eh. No? That they were... Jeremiah was actually one of the prophets together with Ezekiel. So si Daniel in the Nebuchadnezzar's court, kasi papunta na tayo sa 10 times better. So during the third year of King, King Jehoiakim reign in Judah, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came to Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave him victory over King Jehoiakim. So the Lord gave victory to the foreigner who is um, Nebuchadnezzar. You know what happened? Si Jehoiakim, he gave the keys to the temple and um, all the, artic- the, uh, uh, the articles of gold he gave to Nebuchadnezzar as a bribe actually. So si Nebuchadnezzar, he br- brought with him, um, carried with him all the gold articles. Can you imagine yung menorah, di ba? Uh, to Babylon, to Persia. So rabbinical literature describes Jehoiakim came as a godless tyrant king who committed atrocious sins and crimes. He is portrayed as living in incestuous relations with his mother, daughter-in-law, and stepmother, and was in habit of murdering men whose wives he then violated and whose property he seized. Salbahe, no? Si King Jehoiakim. So, he also tattooed his, his whole body, his body. Then King, so nasa Babylon na sila, ano, no? Babylon na sila, Daniel and his three friends. Then King ordered Aspenas, his chief of staff, to bring the to bring to the palace some of the young men of Judah, Judah's royal family. So si Daniel belongs to the royal family, who has been brought to Babylon as captives. Select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men. Make sure they are well versed in every branch of learning, are gifted in knowledge and good judgment, and are suited to serve in the royal palace. So madaling salita. Piliin mo yung mga matatalino para i-training natin. Matalino din si Nebuchadnezzar, ano? So, wag sayangin yung mga magagaling at matatalino ng mga Hebrew. I-train natin yan for the glory of Babylon. Train this young man in the language and literature of Babylon. So the king assigned them a daily ration of food and wine from his own kitchens. They were to be trained for three years and they would enter the royal service. So i-brainwash sila, i-train sila for three years. So that to the point that they will forget their heritage, they will forget their culture. And then daily, meron silang rasyon. Ang tawag dyan sa Hebrew ay uh, uh, pot bag, actually bag, delicacies. In Hebrew, yung portion ng food, uh, di ba, is a bag. Nakakatawa, no? Parang Sharon bag. So, sa so strong concordance, actually it's a pot bag, delicacies, ganyan. Um, to be specific, it's a portion of provision of meat. So, bakit naman ayaw nila Daniel? Kasi makikita nyo dun sa next um, next part, ayaw nila Daniel kainin. Yan, we will not, sabi nga sa next portion. Yung, ah, okay, 
bagoy na. Alam niyo ba yung fat bag? Um, to be nourished as to be intoxicated with de delicacies. Yung fat bag na yan is in homage, in homage to the um, chief Babylonian god, Marduk. So ino-offer muna yan bago ibigay sa kanila. So the Babylonian king wanted to soften the Hebrew youth's obsolete hearts with luxuries. Di ba ganyan naman? Uh, kapag gusto mong paamuhin ng isang tao, bibigyan mo yan ng mga luxury luxury goods. Um, during that time, ang luxury goods ay pagkain. So, ayaw nila. Kasi nga, ino-offer kay Marduk, who is the, ano, parang baal nila nun. So, once one is drawn in by the delicacies, a change in character follows. Ah, so, uh, si Nebuchadnezzar, he, si King Nebu, he wanted to, uh, it's, it's a political move, no? He wanted to brainwash the, the Hebrew nobles, yung mga Hebrew intelligent guys, right? With these delicacies. Kasi once you are hooked, then your attitude and behavior towards Babylon will change and you will favor them. So tingnan natin, ang sabi nila, so Daniel said to the steward whom the chief of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, ito yung mga pangalang ni Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. You know that their Hebrew names are Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Sabi niya, we will not eat your food, your pot bag, your delicacy. Please test your servants for 10 days. And let us let them give us vegetable. Ang Hebrew ng vegetable ay zara. Ah, kaya pala yung zara ay maganda. And water. Zara is uh, one of the meaning is seeds. Seed. To sow, to scatter seed. So yung zara in the Hebrew is seed. Okay? So, meaning, ang kinain nila Daniel is mga nuts, mga seeds, at saka water. Can you imagine? And another meaning ng Sarah sa Strong's Exhaustive Concordance to bear, to concede seed, set with sower, set with the with sower to yield. So in other words, it's it's literally seed. And in the in the new covenant, who is the seed? The seed is the Lord Jesus Christ, right? In Genesis, right, he is the seed given to the woman who will crush the serpent's head. Correct? Ah, so. So in the new covenant, masasabi mo na um, uh, uh, Daniel, the Daniel and his friends were feeding on on the on the Lord Jesus Christ. They were feeding on Jesus Christ on the seed. For the bread of God is that which comes down of heaven. Who in who is that who came down from heaven is the Lord Jesus, right? And gives life to the world. So what because what we eat matters. How and also how we eat, especially with regard to the word of God, matters. So when we eat, when we read the Bible, it's very important to rightly divide the word. That you put the, the lens of the cross in everything that you read from Old Testament to the New Testament. Beginning, so in every Bible study, it is very important to really uh, to really take it to heart in what is written in Luke 24, 27. Beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. When you read the Bible, you have to look for Jesus because everything in the Bible is all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about our problems. It's not about the enemy. The Bible from the Old to the New Testament is all about the Lord Jesus. It's a picture book. So beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures things concerning himself. Because from Genesis to Revelation, it's all about Jesus. And they said, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road, while he opened the scriptures to us? Hallelujah. So what is the goal of every Bible study? It's to feed on Christ. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. And he who believes in me shall never thirst. Because wrong eating will, re will, will lead to wrong believing. And it will cultivate wrong appropriation. Because when you don't understand, right? You will not understand how good God is. And therefore, you will judge your situation. You will judge yourself according to what you believe. And if you believe wrongly, for example... If you believe that you have to get all your blessings, if you get uh, that you if you if, that in, to be able to get all your blessing, you have to be good, then it is wrong, right? You are blessed because God is good. 
you are favored because God has given you favor. It's not because of what we do, but because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. So when you when you study the Bible, study to feed on the person of Jesus. Feed on his beauty, his grace, his majesty, and his immense sacrificial love for you. We read the word to feed on Christ. So to feed on Christ, he is the bread of life. And the more you feed on him in the word, the more you will be strengthened and nourished with his health, life, and wisdom for every area of your life. Because all the answers to all our troubles, marital problems, financial problems, or anumang problem yan, health problems, is found in the person. The solution is found in the person of Jesus Christ. When you study the Bible, again, you study to feed on the person of Jesus. Feed on his beauty, his grace, his majesty, and his immense and sacrificial love for you. We read to study the word to feed on Christ. So, let's continue. And it came to pass. Ah, again, ah, sorry. Ah. So, uh, another, another, um, uh, ana, one example. When you have this, for example, when you are in conflict with, uh, a, with a friend, very uh, much more so kung Christiano yung friend na yan. Or when you're in conflict with um, your husband, when you're in conflict with your wife, or may, uh, may away kayo, alam niya, there's a story in Joshua that says, And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite him and his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua asked him, went to him and said to him, Are you for us or are you, are, are you for our enemy? Are you for our adversary? Lord, uh, Para sa akin, para ikaw, ikaw ba ay para sa akin o para sa mga kaaway ko? Alam mo ang sabi ni Lord? Kasi si Lord yan eh, he's um, a pre-incarnate uh, uh, appearance. You know what he said? He said, no, but as the commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. No, as a commander of the army of the Lord, he has now come to your situation to solve it. Because he also loves that person. He also loves your husband. He also loves your wives. He also loves your friends. O ano yung sinasabi ni Lord? I have come to solve your problem. I have come as the commander of the army of the Lord. I have come to solve your challenges. Hallelujah. So it's going to be, you know, we are going to look at our enemies and be able to love them, right? And be able to extend patience and kindness to them. Because you know what? Um... That's what the Lord said. I have now come. I'm not against you. I'm not against them. But I have come to solve your situation. You know, there's a, there's a, uh, the, the sweet psalmist of Israel. Diba sabi ni Lord, si King David? King David is the man after his own heart. We've discussed this, we've discussed this um, uh, 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 many, many times. And we said that, oh, the reason why David is the man um, um, after God's own heart is because he wanted to build God a temple. But you know what? I had uh, another realization and another revelation um, just recently. You know what? The reason why, you know, the, 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 the title, Man After God's Own Heart, you know what it is? Another facet of it. Another facet of it. Diba si David, sabi niya ganun, I have uh, uh, fought the lion and a bear. For what? To save the sheep, right? Ikaw ba, when you meet a lion and you meet a bear, are you going to save the sheep? So si David, you know, he's not willing to give up that sheep. So he faced the lion and the bear and that's the heart of the Lord. He doesn't want anybody to be lost. He doesn't want anybody to not, not be saved, right? He doesn't want anybody to experience hardship because he loves everybody. He loves you and I. So he is willing, <coughs> just like David, right, to face death, actually, to receive death, right, for you and I because he's not willing for anybody to perish. And that's why David was accorded the title, the man after God's own heart. So precious, no? Because he's not willing to lose even one sheep. David was not willing to lose not even one sheep to the lion and the bear. Hallelujah. And the Lord is saying to, uh, to you, I have now come as the commander of the army of the Lord in your situation. Do you have a challenge? Give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. So 
Yung uh, Hebrew dyan ng come is bo. Bo, yes, now come. He's, 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 and when he comes, he will not leave you nor forsake you. He came to abide in you. Ha, hallelujah. So, ang gandang ano, no, kung meron kang kaaway. <laughs> right? Okay, Lord, you solve this situation because you're neither uh, 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 for us nor against or, 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 or against my, my enemy. So now, okay, Lord, you can love your enemies. But because the greatest, um, the greatest love was exhibited on the cross. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet his enemies, he died for us on the cross. Hallelujah. In John 1, 18, you know, the, the beauty of our Lord Jesus Christ, no one ever before gaze upon the full splendor of God, except his uniquely beloved son, who is cherished by the father and is held close to his heart. Now that he has come to us, he has unfolded the full explanation of who God truly is. You know, um, you, you want to know who God is? Then look at Jesus because he is the full explanation of God. Hallelujah. So in John 1, 18 John, he's the full revelation. He's the full explanation of who God is. You want to know who God is? Then you have to find out more about Jesus. Yung ano dyan, yung um, uh, um, has, has made him known is exegesis. Exegesis, to be exact, in pronunciation. Exegesis, pag narinig niyo yung mga pastor niyo na nagsabi niya, nang ibig niyang sabihin niya, eh, means to bring out the true meaning, the true meaning of God. And Jesus is the only true exegesis of the Father. Whatever scripture you're trying to interpret, whether it be in the Old Testament or the New, must be seen through the revelation of the Father that Jesus brought. That's why every Bible study should begin with the words of Luke 24, 27. Beginning from Moses, he expounded things concerning himself. Hallelujah. So let's continue with Daniel. No? In Daniel 1, 17, 20, to these four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. And at the end of the time, by the set by the king to bring them in, the chief official presented to them, to them, to Nebuchadnezzar, the king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah. So they entered the king's service in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king's question King questioned them. He found them ten times better. So how do we how 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 do we get the status of ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in the whole kingdom? The secret is found in Daniel eleven thirty two b thirty three a. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploit. The secret is to know your God, to know your God through who through Jesus Christ. And those people who understand shall instruct many. And therefore, you can share to other people his goodness. So, you know yung Hebrew meanings? Yung Hebrew, me yung Hebrew meanings behind the names of Daniel. So, Daniel means, God is my judge. So, pinalitan yung pangalan niya, naging Bel Belteshashar. It means, Bel protects his life. So, naging uh, pagan name. So, yung si Hananiah, ang ibig sabihin niyan is Yahweh is gracious. Pinalitan ng Shadrach. Hindi pala maganda ang ibig sabihin ng Shadrach. Ang Shadrach, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay I fear ako. Sino si ako? Si Marduka, yung pagan god nila. Yung original name ni Meshach ay Mishael. Ang ibig sabihin, who is what god? Right? Show me god. Ayan, ginawang Meshach. Ang sabi, who is ako? Hindi maganda, no? So, yung original name ni Abednego is Azariah. Yahweh has help. Azariah. Tapos naging Abednego na ang ibig sabihin, servant of Marduk and patron deity of the scribal guild. But you know what? Despite the fact na pinalitan yung mga names nila, they never forgot. So most especially in Daniel 1, they knew who they were. Daniel, God is, uh, God is my judge. Hananiah, the Lord is gracious. Mishael, who is God? There is no one like him. Azariah, yeah, Yahweh has help. Yahweh is my helper. Ganda, no? So specifically si Daniel, God is my judge, is from two composite words, yung El at saka Dan. Yung El dyan is Elohim, which means God. Yung Dan is uh, judge. So yung Dan is the word for judge. May, uh, two, may dalawang, uh, ano yan, it's a noun and a verb. Yung noun dyan is Dun, which means Adon or Adonai. 
Yung shapat, it's the verb. It means to pronounce a sentence for or against. So what does it mean? God is my judge. Meaning, He has judged you already according to the finished work at the cross. Anong sabi ng cross? What did the cross accomplish you? By His stripes, you are healed. You are the healed of the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and you are the redeemed of the Lord. You are forever saved. Hallelujah. So judge yourself. Judge your situation according to what Jesus has done. Hallelujah. Ang ganda, no? So the Hebrew understanding for a judge is descriptive. It's practical and appropriate to, to circumstances. In the Hebrew, in the Hebrew mind, a judge is the person who first of all delivers and sees to the needs of the needy, who defends and executes justice by retaliation against the enemy. So when you are faced with a challenge, judge the challenge in the in the lens of the cross, right? That A, it is finished. Just rest. Because God will sort it out for you. Hallelujah. So, let's let's continue. So, in Daniel 3, 16 to 17, sabi nga nun, ano, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king. So, this yung story na they were, they were uh, they will be um, thrown into the furnace. Sabi nga nun, if that is the case, sabi nga nun, may, parang may ano, no? parang mayroong something na uh, uh, hindi sure. Sabi nga, if, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able. But you know what? Yung Hebrew nung, yung if that, yung if don is actually hen. It's to behold. Meaning, hindi siya, hindi siya, hindi, walang if. Ang sinasabi dito ni Shadrach, Meshach, and Abedico, ni Azaria, Mishael, at saka ni um, Azaria, Mishael, and, uh, uh, ano nga ang pangalan niya? <laughs> Hananiah. Ay, behold, God will deliver us from the from the from the fiery furnace. So ganun yung ano nila, no? ganun yung faith nila. So because you know what? Because they know their God. In the Greek it is epigenosko. In 2 Peter 1 2 to 3, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. So how to be strong when we know him? When we know him when we know Him, to know Him thoroughly, accurately, well, recognized by sight, to perceive, to find out, to ascertain, and to understand. Hallelujah. That's why we're having Bible studies week in, week out, right? It's to know Him. Because Jesus did not say, you shall know the facts and the facts will set you free. Parang, you will know the facts about this sickness and it will set you free. No. Jesus said, he said that we would be the people who know the truth. And the truth would set you free. Hindi, the truth will set you free. It's the truth that you know. So you have to know the truth. That's why it's very fruitful to attend Bible studies, right? Because you, you know that God declares you to be the healed of the Lord. That God has declared you to be the favored of the Lord. And He declared Himself to be this truth, Emmanuel, God with us. This is the most profound and of primary import, important revelation that you, we understand that He's with us, right? And this is the truth that God's people have always been called to live from. God with us. Through, throughout the Bible, God's people are told that the facts are not the truth and that we are to live from. We are to live from the truth that the Spirit declares and reveals. There is nothing wrong with facing the facts, but as believers, we're not called to live from there, as if the natural realm is our only reality. We are called to live from the truth of His finished work, from the truth of His word. Meaning in, 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 uh, in John 17, 3, because this is the truth, the truth of eternal life. You know, eternal life is not defined as when you die, you go to heaven. No. John 17, 3, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life is knowing Him, meaning eter heaven begins on earth. Because when you believe on Jesus Christ, now you have eternal life beginning on earth. Ayonos in the in the in the in the Greek quality of God's life where here on earth and Zoe life, Zoe life. The Lord intimately shares His gift of life with His people. Hallelujah! So I want to share with th uh, this with you again. And this will really uh, uh, blow your socks off once uh, once again. You know, the si, si, si Lord Jesus, he was asked by his disciples to, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he said, okay, this is how you're going to pray. 
Pray then like this, our Father in heaven, holy be your name, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? So we begin from the highest, from the highest position. Where is your position? You are with your Father in heaven. So where in Christ, where are you? Because in Christ, where are you today? Why, why can you say that your position is your Father in heaven? Because in, in Christ, where are you today? Your life is hidden with Christ in God. In Colossians 3.3, 3, 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Where are you today? Your life is hidden with Christ in God. And where is Christ seated? Christ is sitting at the right hand of God in Colossians 3, 1b, seated at the right hand of Abba. So, where is heaven? Where is heaven? Heaven in the Greek is Uranus. Uranus, that's where they, they got the name of the planet Uranus. So, there's uh, in the Thayer's lexicon, there are two meanings of heaven. Yung first is the vaulted expanse of the sky. So, what you see, diba? Heaven, sa taas, diba? With all the things visible in it. But you know there's another meaning. The region above the side real heavens, the seat of an order of things eternal and consummately perfect where God dwells and the other heavenly beings. You know, um, and, and if you go further to the Thayer's lexicon, the highest heaven is the dwelling place of God. Who is the dwelling place of God? Where are you? You are in Christ, and Jesus Christ is in you, and therefore, where is heaven? <coughs> heaven is in you. Heaven is on earth. Hallelujah. Heaven is walking somewhere in Emos. Heaven is walking somewhere in Santol. You are the dwelling place of God. Oh, may verse yan in 1 Corinthians 15, 47 to 48. Basahin natin yung 48. As was the man of dust, so also are those who are made of dust. And as is the heavenly man, so also are those who are heavenly. You and I, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, are heavenly. You are heavenly. You are not earthly. So where is heaven? Your heaven, you are heaven residing on earth. You are heaven walking somewhere to, walking somewhere to bless other people. You are a favor walking somewhere to heaven. That's why pagpunta ka sa palengke, uh, bili ka ng isda, wala namang bumibili. Then suddenly maraming, uh, marami na siyang, ano, marami, na, marami nang bibili. Because you are a favor magnet. So where is heaven? You know, the first, the first uh, manifestation of heaven coming down to earth is when Jesus, when our Lord Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. Glory to God in the highest. Now they were in the same country, right? The angel, the host of angels showed themselves to the to the shepherds and they said, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring to you good tidings of great joy. Right? So it's the first time that, that heaven heaven came down to earth, and suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, and exactly every time. A person believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what's happening in heaven. There's the heavenly hosts are rejoicing because again, right? There's a replay of the first occurrence of Emmanuel, God with us. And therefore, and therefore heaven is rejoicing. Glory to God in the highest and on earth because you are on earth. You are heaven on earth. Goodwill towards men. So, you are he you are heaven walking somewhere in BGC. You are heaven walking somewhere in the office. You are walking somewhere in the marketplace. You are walking somewhere to bless other people. Goodwill toward men. Ganda, no? Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, just to cement it, do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? And therefore, if you have sickness, if you are sick, you can say, I am God's temple. I am heavenly. How can sickness, how can sickness stay in my body? No, the spirit of God dwells in you. God, you are God's temple. So where is heaven again? Your presence is heaven on earth. Your presence is heaven in your office. So you can sing this. Your presence is heaven to me. 
Your presence is heaven to me. Ganda, no? So, now, the, the, the verse in Matthew 6 is answered. It's already fulfilled. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven is fulfilled. His will be done on earth is fulfilled in your family because you are there. Hallelujah. So now, uh, you know, the earth, your, this earth is now your physical theater in which our eternal destiny freely plays out. In the, in the Old Testament, yung Hebrew term dyan is astia, which is earth. And in Ephesians 2.6, we are seated in the heavenly places. Ganda, no? So, but it doesn't make sense, the Joe. It doesn't make sense, Joe. You know why? You and I are obsessed with logic. You and I are obsessed with earthly rational. If we look at it that way, we're not going to understand it because we have to look at it from the lens of the cross, from the lens of heaven, from the lens of Abba. Our Father has never seen us after our earthly record or our performance. He has never seen what we do as who we are. He sees us in Christ. Hallelujah. So the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of God's grace is so wonderful, supernatural and timeless. The Holy Spirit is the one who comes to open our eyes more and more to the glory of the gospel, which reveals the beauty of God, his Father's heart for his children. The Holy Spirit is awakening man and woman to the reality of a God who wants to commune with them. So that in Romans 1, 16, 17, you can say boldly, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. What is the power of God to salvation? The gospel of Jesus Christ. For in it, God's righteousness from faith to faith is revealed. The righteous shall live by faith. And one of them is he lived by faith that you are heavenly. Hallelujah. And therefore, Christ, your identity, your identity is Christ in him crucified, defines who you are. In Christ, you are not living under your circumstances, but above the circumstances of this world. In Christ, neither what you have done or what, ha what was done to you defines who you are. Because you are in Christ. You can stand still. Jesus latches onto you. Yatsab, di ba? So si David, inaral natin from last week, merong dalawang um, denominator, right? Pero ito yung pinaka-third. Yung una is um, yung anointing. They were anointed. Si David, si Jesus, si, si Caleb. And then they went into the wilderness where they overcome the, the challenges. But you know what? You, there's a third denominator that I discovered. David said, Yea, though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. The Lord Jesus also said, and that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Caleb said, the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. So the, the, the most precious revelation, because of the gospel of grace, now the Lord is in you. The now the Lord is with you. Now you are in Christ. The Holy Spirit is in you. And, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. So do not, do not fear. Hallelujah. So um, in Matthew 1, 23, Behold, the virgin shall be with the child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. You know that um, uh, uh, Mary said, let it be. So our posture is also say, let it be. And the, the two words for God with us is um, im and el, with us is God. With you is God. And therefore, you can actually have the posture to not fear. So be still and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. You know yung refuge yan is sagab. In the Hebrew, it's sagab. It's an inaccessibly high. Inaccessibly high because you are in heaven. Hallelujah. Seated in the heavenly places where the enemy cannot touch you. Well, many of us Christians have been brought up to think that it's only after we die uh, only af after we die that we go to heaven and go to be with the Lord. It is a message that tells you that in the future, in the by and by, right, you're, you're going to be with Jesus. It's all about you getting to getting a call from heaven uh, and uh, uh, to be your home one day after you die. But you know what? That is that is that, that is a um, that is a lie because the mindset of a Christ, the mindset of Christian church, the Christian has become for us more like an intermediate state. 
a place where you have to wait in for years before you get to be with the Lord. But you know what? God is with us, right? So I don't believe Jesus' vision for his church was purgatory, but rather heaven on earth. Yes, it's wonderful that one day we shall be glorified. We shall have glorified bodies and live in a place where there's no more sickness and no more grief and no more death. But the gospel is not a message about our desire to make heaven our home one day. It is a message about God's desire to make us his home today. God is with us. So when we say yesterday's anointing is not enough for today's battle, it's a lie. So when we cry for new and fresh anointing, power and authority and blessing, it's a lie. So what happened to the anointing, power and blessing you received upon believing in Jesus? Did it expire? Did it got outdated? Did it go sour? Oh, how, oh now it's old? Are you aware that the anointing is the Holy Spirit? who is this deposited to us as a gift. So, in 1 John 2.27, in Ephesians 1.13-14, so what happened to the first Holy Spirit you received? Did it expire? No! No, right? That you, you now seek a new one or you just don't know the truth. Some Someone may say, but in Isaiah, God says, I'll do a new thing. Yes, God has already done the new for us in the person of Jesus. When you have Christ, you have everything. Beloved in Christ, you have been given everything that you need that pertains, pertains to life and godliness. You don't need to keep on crying for a new thing. In Christ, you live in newness. It is, in, it is His power that is work in you. God is not in heaven doing anything new that is not already accomplished in Jesus. The cross worked the first time. Just trust and let Him work out all that He has worked in you. For all the battles of life, we don't fight for victory. We don't cry victory, but we fight from victory, from the position of our heavenly Father. Hallelujah. And that, my dear sisters, is 10 times better than the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.